Hey everyone, and welcome to the Overthrow YouTube channel. My name is David Vranikar. Normally, I'm uh, overworking on the Overthrow podcast called Start Yours, uh, but today we're bringing the podcast to the YouTube channel so that we could bring you uh, some really cool interviews that we did with e-commerce entrepreneurs around the world about how coronavirus is affecting their online businesses. And before we dig in, I should be real clear that we understand that uh, you know drop shipping supply chains and customer refunds uh, that these are not the most pressing issues when it comes to uh, the current situation with with COVID-19. Um, we get that. We really do. Everybody's had their lives uh, turned upside down by this thing. And that's why I'm I'm here in my living room. And while I think we were able to uh, edit out all of my babies crying uh, from the background, apologies in advance if any of that seeped in. So uh, first off, we're going to head down to Australia to talk with Emma Reed. Um, and then we're going to go uh, talk with a pair of entrepreneurs from Canada, uh, Rodney Zakariuk and Corey Zostak. And then finally, we're going to wrap things up uh, talking with Ryan Carroll, who joined us from California. So yeah, we asked them what they're seeing, uh, how this is, uh, situation is affecting their businesses, what they're planning uh, in the weeks and months ahead, and just uh, yeah, how they're keeping you know their, their stores and their sanity intact while we wait for things to settle down. So uh, we hope you enjoy uh, this podcast. If you want to listen to more episodes of Start Yours, it's available anywhere that you listen to podcasts. For now, though, uh, sit back and enjoy it here on YouTube. So before the, the coronavirus outbreak started, you had already shifted from a pure dropshipping model where you were sourcing orders you know, one at a time as they came in into a model where you were you know, holding inventory. Um, but that hasn't stopped you from having some of the same uh, you know, supply chain headaches that, that overload users and that businesses around the world are having right now. Your products, uh, you know, do still come from China. You still rely on a lot of the same logistical infrastructures that a lot of businesses do. So I'm curious, um, you know, what you've seen since coronavirus forced shutdowns uh, throughout China in, in late January and kind of what, what does that look like uh, for you and your business? Yeah, I can definitely say that I've had a lot of problems with the supply line and logistics. I have noticed like an issue with manufacturers, like I order direct from a factory and they were completely shut down for over a month Wow! and I couldn't order any stock. Uh, and China's still basically in lockdown, even though they are returning to work at this stage, uh, my factory is still not back to work and still not able to produce what I need. Yeah, just, just for the record, it's it's March 19th as we record this. And so, so yeah, we're, it, it's still very much kind of a, a precarious situation. So sorry, sorry, I just wanted to give some context on the on the timeline. So, so what what is going on with with your uh, supplier these days is still still kind of doors shut? Yeah, I'm about to run out of stock. Mm. So I have until basically the end of this week, and then I'm basically sold out of stock. Uh, and my factory takes about 30 days to reduce it. So I'm here in limbo for about a month, assuming things are like back to normal by then right yeah and who knows who knows what'll be going on the official day of chinese new year was january 25th this year and then and then they said they were going to extend the holiday a little bit and then you know the first announcement was that it would go into february and then it was february 8th and then february 10th and then um it's just kind of never like you said it's never completely gotten back to normal do you have contingency plans or or you know what what do you think the next 30 days are going to look like once you know once all the all the products that you have in, in your inventory are, are gone well i don't really have any way to get stock other than that um so i'll basically be spending a lot of time like working on planning out the future of the business planning um what i want to include in like the next iteration of the product because i am working on like improving the product and putting my own custom designs on it and everything like that. So I'll be doing a lot of work on that. And um, I already did a lot of work on like redoing the entire website and the branding and the product photos. So I don't necessarily need to do that. That was when it was initially shut down. That's what I spent that time doing. But now, yeah, it's sort of like in limbo, but I will be doing a lot of work on the business. There's a lot more that goes into it than, you know, just making sales. Right. And I think it's, you know, it's, it's easier said than done, you know, to, to have this attitude of, you know, hey, you can actually take advantage of this downtime to optimize your systems and, you know, update your product descriptions and, and, and all this other stuff that, you know, people might be putting off while they're while they're making sales. And so I, I know that that might be, 
you know, tricky for some people, just given that there's no immediate payoff, there's no immediate revenue, but you know, talk a little bit more about, about what you are doing that is within your control. Cause like you said that, you know, a, a factory in, in China getting back to work, like you, you are not going to be able to, you know, snap your fingers and make that happen. But, but there is, you know, a huge list of things that you, that you can work on. So what is, what has the, uh, you know, the stuff within your control uh, been that, that you've been trying to optimize in the meantime? So um, back when I couldn't ship anything at all and I was just in limbo, I was working on uh, redoing the entire website. So from like I had a completely new theme, I completely customized it and like fully branded my site around the ideal audience that I had, uh, the people that were buying the most. Uh, and that has increased my increased my conversion rate now that I'm selling again. As well as that, I got like, an entirely new logo, new colors, everything, redone my whole social media, planned and photographed like two months worth of posts for social media, wow. filmed new ads, uh, just so many different things that, you know, get neglected if you're in this cycle of like making sales uh, and then not really going back to op optimize right. all the rest of your stuff. And so you mentioned your your audience and your you know, kind of your, your ideal customer. And I'm curious what sort of communication you're having with, with your audience. Are you um, preemptively warning people that, that orders might take a while? Have you adjusted the shipping times that you, that you display on your website? It seems like this, you know, communication element would be super crucial right now, um, you know, in both in terms of expectation setting and then also just, you know, nurturing relationships and making sure that you, you know, stay in people's good graces. What communication are you are you having and how, how has that unfolded in the last you know month plus? Yeah, definitely. It's super important to communicate with your customers and potential customers on like what their expectations are with shipping. Thankfully, because I am shipping or was like shipping with an agent and all of my orders were getting out and leaving China and delivering in a reasonable time frame, it was like I didn't have to give them many like delay notices, like horrible bad news that their order will take a few months. Right. Uh, so most people have been pretty happy uh, with being able to, to notif notify them and keep them in the loop. I set up an email flow after they order and it will tell them, you know, this is how long it's going to take, but there could be unexpected interruptions. We're just not really sure at the moment. Mm -hmm. Like just prepares them, like gets them out of the mindset of, wow, I ordered something. It's going to be here in like three days. Yeah, I warn them that like we're a small business and there's supply line issues going around because of the coronavirus. And these days people are aware of that. People are totally fine uh, that there's going to be issues because even stores like Apple right now are facing major issues. This transparency and kind of this, you know, the the customized email flow that you set up, this has been well received by, by your customers. It's not something where they immediately reply and say, you know, give me a refund. I've only had like maybe two or three people out of like the thousands of customers that I have actually be like really concerned and not want their package. Yeah. So most of them are completely happy with it. You talked about, you know, things hopefully soon kind of returning to normal on, on the China side and, 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 you know, maybe if everything gets rolling again, then you might be, you know, within a few weeks of having a bunch of inventory. And then once you have that, you know, you could kind of have some, some normalcy on the, on the supply chain side. I'm curious though, if you're concerned about about new problems or, or new challenges that might be emerging with shutdowns in, in other parts of the world. And so that I could kind of imagine that there's a scenario where there's a, a sense of normalcy returning to China, but then, you know, shipping in all of Europe is messed up or, or that, you know, shipping in the United States is, is real screwy. Are, are there other things that are kind of top of mind for you right now outside of China? Yeah, I was warned about this by my agent. He um, told me that Basically, there was a big issue with like stuff coming out of China in the beginning, but now China's sort of returning back to normal, but all the other countries, they're facing lockdowns and cancellations of passenger flights mm -hmm. and e-packet specifically in China Post rely on passenger flights. So there's like, you know, when there's not enough passenger flights, then how are your package is supposed to get to these other countries? While as other carriers, private carriers such as SF Express and Yoon Express, they rely on cargo flights and they don't have to rely on all of the passenger flights and tourists and people traveling back and forth. So they have their own private airlines that deliver the packages to these countries. And so, so these these private shipping options, is this something that you think, you know, dropshippers 
um, who are who are relying on on AliExpress products? Is it something they should be looking for? Because historically, we've always talked about how great ePacket is. And, and for, for those who don't know, ePacket is this it, it's this cheap, relatively fast way um, to, to ship products coming out of China to, I think it's like 30 or 40 different countries. And, you know, it's been a, a reliable, you know, part of, of a lot of businesses that, that use Oberlo. As you mentioned, though, Emma, it's getting a little bit screwy these days. Should people be thinking about ways to get creative with the, uh, the various shipping options? Yeah, people should definitely be thinking about trying to order their products and get their products shipped with private carriers rather than an e-packet. Um, a lot of businesses are in China are actually being asked to stop using e-packet at this stage because of the, the massive backlog and slowdown while they try to fix like the logistics issue of the planes. Uh, so definitely like try to talk to your supplier and get them to use a different method. And the ones I recommend are UBI, SF Express, and Unixpress, uh, Y-U-N Express. You can't actually choose these methods on AliExpress though. So that's a little bit difficult to organize mm -hmm. because a lot of suppliers either don't like have a relationship with these carriers. Maybe they don't know who they are and they don't have an account set up. Um, and it makes it a little bit difficult when placing an order, order on AliExpress. Sometimes you can get them to choose, like you can choose ePacket and then tell them, no, I want to use this other method. Mm -hmm. uh, and depending on your relationship with your supplier, maybe that will work. Or you could get them to set up like a VIP link where they change the price of the product to incorporate the other shipping method and then send it that way. Or you can even take your transactions off AliExpress uh, and have a relationship with CSV files and pay them through TransferWise or PayPal. So there's a lot of different options there and you really got to try to see what works best for you and your supplier. You were on the uh, the podcast a few months ago and, and one of the things that, that we hit on uh, quite a bit was was the stress that's involved with with entrepreneurship and with e-commerce and and you know you you had this story of kind of of having tons of success but then that success kind of ended with this burnout that was uh you know everything kind of came crashing down right as it was getting really good and, and it seems like you know the sort of stuff going on right now with you know ambiguity around you know product fulfillment and then th this this kind of maze of of shipping options that you just mentioned this seems like stuff that's going to be causing a lot of people a lot of stress and so what what would you say to, to somebody who's you know like you in this situation where there's a lot of things that are out of your control there's a lot of question marks both you know when it comes to china and then now more and more elsewhere in the world um how are you dealing with the stress and, and you know what have you learned in, in your years of, of e-commerce that might be helpful to, to anybody else who's who's under the same sort of pressure um, personally, it's not really affecting me too much emotionally because I'm so used to like having supply issues or headaches like this, like things that just pop up and they're completely out of your control. It is part of being an entrepreneur. Like a lot of things are going to be on fire sometimes mm -hmm. and then you're going to have really good days and then you're going to have really bad days. It's just all part of the journey. Like I like to say it's like a roller coaster. You have a lot of fun, but it can be pretty scary at times. Cool. I'll, I'll get you out of here on this. And, and I wanted to double back to something that you mentioned, you know, before we started, you know, we're talking about trying to find silver linings in, in this and, you know, things are shut down and there's ambiguity and it's, you know, creating a lot of headaches, but, but there are things to do and that there's still uh, progress to be made. And, and, and you talked about this, this anecdote from, from Isaac Newton. I thought that was cool and I thought it was really appropriate. So what, what, uh, what are you uh, learning from this 18th century physicist about how to handle a, a 21st century pandemic. So back when Isaac Newton was at university, there was actually a pandemic, the London plague. And everyone was told to, you know, stay at home and like sort of self quarantine. And he actually had his biggest discoveries on gravity and motion during that time, during the time he wasn't able to go to university. So I, I just want to say that it's a perfect time to, you know, get out there and learn and um, really like try to learn some skills that will help set you up for when things come back to normal. Because if you're not learning and preparing and building out things while there is like this lull, uncertain time when no one's really doing much, then you'll be behind when things return back to normal. All right, Emma, um, I'll let you go. I, I really appreciate you hopping on. And I know this is something that you uh, have been talking about with a lot of other e-commerce entrepreneurs over at uh, your Facebook group, Ecom Explorers, E-C-O-M Explorers. So there's more, more cool stuff from, from Emma 
over there. And um, yeah, Emma, thanks so much for taking the time. No worries. Okay, big thank you to Emma Reed for joining us from Australia. Let's keep things rolling and see what Rodney Zakariuk and Corey Jostak are up to over in Vancouver. You guys were actually in the process of, of optimizing your supply chain just prior to uh, you know coronavirus turning everything upside down in China, and that would have been in, in late January. And so, of course, there's no good timing on, on these sort of things, but, but it was particularly crazy for you two and kind of your plans for, for your store. Um, what, what were you up to? Like, what were the optimizations that you were doing and, and how have your plans uh, been affected by this all? Yeah, so we were actually uh, moving from drop shipping into more so uh, creating custom products. So we had a, a large line of custom products that we were creating and we were waiting for our manufacturer um, to produce them for a while there. And they were finally created. And then just as we were getting them shipped over to our fulfillment agent, as they were prepared, Chinese New Year's happened. So we had to wait. And then as Chinese New Year's was happening, um, we got word of the coronavirus coming out. It obviously extended it from there on as well. So at that point, we were we were just like kind of running around in circles um, thinking, okay, like we're just waiting on this product, waiting on this product, what can we do? And um, from there, we just started to really like completely rework and uh, reverse engineer our whole business model and um, started to kind of work it from the ground up and go through everything and make sure that everything was now at our next tier of um i guess uh, scalability scalability mm -hmm. and just like the, the level of quality that we were looking for yeah the the issue with what we were operating as before was you know uh drop shipping with aliexpress obviously the margins just you know they're they're not there in comparison to when you bulk purchase items so mm -hmm. we really wanted to steer away from that and we were lucky enough to run marketing campaigns that were still profitable with those margins. However, obviously we wanted to move on to bigger and better things. So uh, the the supply chain just wasn't working for us. And we weren't confident in the shipping practices of our supplier at the time, mm -hmm. kind of leading up to Christmas, Black Friday, and I guess Chinese New Year, we ran into an abnormal amount of customer support queries in which we had to get to the bottom of, you know, and it all stemmed from our, our supply chain just not being efficient and uh, to that uh, or to that extent it just wasn't acceptable to us anymore so you know we decided okay if we do get these custom products made we can get them into a warehouse or a fulfillment center and from there we can utilize their couriers or you know supply chain process and uh, even custom package our stuff as well and then have it or rely on them as opposed to our supplier. Um, Cause when we were originally doing this, you know, we, we thought having a supplier also ship our products was kind of the best way to go about it because, you know, that's one less step in right. the supply chain right. in, in getting it to the customer. But, you know, as time went on, we slowly realized we're getting all these customer support queries. We're losing money with potential chargebacks and, or people asking for refunds. Um, because of delays and issues with packages not moving uh, or tracking numbers not being updated. So, yeah, we <laughs> coronavirus hit us at just the worst time because we were we were ready to have that all all planned out and, and uh, set to go. But then we decided, you know, we should probably tread with caution here. Uh, we're not sure exactly what the shipping channels are going to be. We had heard ePacket was going to experience major delays. Uh, some of the special lines had been increased in price by up to 20%, I think, for Yun Wang and SF Express. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, we kind of just put things on pause and decided to uh, take the time to learn more more techniques and skills uh, and, uh, you know, invest in ourselves to be prepared for when we can scale and use that actual supply chain. So I want to I want to press you on the the learning new skills thing in just a minute, but but let me let me double back to something you said about about having to be cautious. We've talked before, you know, you've been on the podcast before, and and I know you guys like to move, uh, you know, like to get things done and and, and test yeah. and then fire away. Um, has it been difficult, just kind of you know from a, a spiritual level for you guys to have to you know pump the brakes on everything and, and and hit pause, not just hit pause, but hit pause at this moment when you were like exactly trying to scale up? Definitely, yeah, it's definitely a, a mental test, but it ultimately comes back down to our mindset as well. Um, we've really conditioned our mindset now, where us a year ago this would have been like devastating. It would have been devastating, <laughs> but now we're, our mindset is a lot uh, a lot better now. So we're in the place where 
we have this grand vision in our head and yes, there's going to be hiccups along the way, but in reality, the grand vision is still being worked on with developing our own skills and developing our website and uh, just improving everything within our business model. So we, we see that still working towards our grand vision. So even though that we're not advertising or sales aren't coming in right now, it's it's still progress in, in towards the grand vision. What, what would your response have looked like if, if this were 12 months ago? Like if you had this newbie mindset, you know, when, when you didn't have as much experience, hadn't had the same, you know, same fails, the same successes, if you were like, you know, new to the game, what would have been different between that and, and the way you're handling it now? I think that last year, well, actually last year around this time, or, or I guess Chinese New Year, you know, we got rocked with that initially. And that was kind of our first introduction of, okay, you're in business now and you have to play by the world's rules essentially, mm -hmm. right? So yeah. at that time, you know, we got home or we were in Hawaii and uh, we, we got that news like, hey, we're shutting down for the next two or three weeks from suppliers. And, you know, we took that experience and brought it to this experience because we knew Chinese New Year was coming up. Uh, and I guess the coronavirus has just acted as more of an extension uh, to that. But last year, yeah, we probably would have been running around with like chickens with their heads cut off because, yeah. you know, we weren't disciplined. We were flying by the seat of our pants, making adjustments on the fly, you know, just not actively thinking about the systems that we're trying to create. Mm -hmm. Instead, we were trying to react to what had happened to us. Obviously, there wasn't really any prediction of the coronavirus being a factor this year, but we knew Chinese New Year was coming up. So we knew that we were going to be down for a little while because we hadn't actually set up that supply chain just yet. We were in the process of it. Uh, so I think it's been a little easier to deal with to some degree, but at the same time, of course, you know, not being able to go full in on a project you put so much time and effort into, it sucks. But uh, actually, Emma, the the girl you guys also brought into a burlow, Emma Reed, she sent us a Facebook post a couple of days ago talking about, I can't remember what the guy's name was, but it was essentially a, a CEO who, or, or someone at an agency that interviewed a bunch of CEOs and they were saying that, uh, the CEOs who were the most disciplined with the best mindset and the most motivated to succeed were the ones that were moving forward regardless of the situation at hand here. And that really resonated with us because when we first got word that the coronavirus had hit, you know, we, we were pretty shocked. Like we took at least one or two days off to kind of just mellow out, let our bodies sync up and our minds sync up to what the reality is and then get back to work and actually put a plan in place and not get distracted. Yeah, I, th I think it ultimately like the difference maker would be um, the emotional response right now as well. If it were to happen last year, we were definitely just reacting to everything on such high emotions. So we were so quick to react to anything that was happening to us that um, we weren't really thinking or processing anything when we were doing it, we were just doing it. So now we kind of have that that mindset of, okay, take a step back, like really think about this and process it and the best way to approach it now and um and what can you work on in the meantime because like in reality like things like this like the coronavirus it's unfortunately it's out of our control right so if we can work on things that are in our control that's what we're going to focus on right now one, one thing i'm curious about and I, I know you guys have been thinking about this as well is is if a scenario unfolds where, where things kind of return to normal in china and you know and you guys get the you guys get the supply chain sorted out that you wanted and, and you, you know, yeah. were able to kind of you know make the adaptations that you were planning on, you know, maybe a few months late, but it all happens, yeah. it all goes through. So so let's say that that unfolds the way you want it to, but then things get really messed up everywhere else. Like, like you know, you're in Canada, Canada's going through an ordeal right now. I'm, I'm from the US. A lot of questions right now, a lot of school closings, restaurant closings, job losses, stock market. I mean, every, everything's just really, really crazy right now in North America and, and in Europe yeah. as well. And so if, if things are somewhat normal in China, but then everywhere else gets gets a little bit out of whack, what are the plans then? I mean, do you, do you have like a, a timeline that you're looking at for when you think things are gonna get back to normal or, or, or is this a, a day by day thing? What, what does it look like with all this ambiguity, not just in China, but, but elsewhere as well? Yeah, yeah, we definitely have been thinking about this. Um, it, it's honestly a day by day thing right now. Um, unfortunately, it's something that we can't really predict. So it, it's something that we're gonna approach um, with adaptability and we're approaching with our with our mindset that no matter what happens we're going to work through it so um things could completely change in a week things could completely change in a month um we could be working in a completely different um economy 
which we are we already kind of are right um in a month's time in a year's time so it's it's all about adaptability and just kind of taking each day and uh gathering the information that we can collect from it and uh seeing what we can do with it yeah fortunately like canada had said that they're shutting down borders so like it is a good thing in a sense to help stop the spread of the coronavirus but obviously you know with packages we're not too sure what's going to happen whether our types of packages will be making it through customs uh, our prime minister had mentioned that i think it was just an essential goods would be would be pushed through but mm-hmm. you know we're, we're trying to stay up to date on all of that but one thing that we talk about constantly is you know we put ourselves through the school of hard knocks this last year and a half uh, the amount of lessons and experiences and self-education that we've developed is something that's never going to be taken away from us, regardless of whether or not this coronavirus takes us down or, or we work through it, right? So even if it does force us to pause things for an extended period of time, you know, we we have these skills that we can develop or that we've developed to build websites for other people, help run marketing for other people. So, you know, if we really have to make a pivot for the time being, it's not the end of the world. I guess it's more of just a hiccup or a barrier for us to kind of get through or a hurdle for us to get over uh, before we jump back into regular operations. Yeah. And I know, I know that's something that you guys have always been big on is, is treating yourselves as an asset and, and not just not just the store, not just the products, but that, you know, that you yourselves are an asset. So, you know, you might be running Instagram campaigns to, to generate sales, but you're also accumulating really valuable knowledge about Instagram. It, has that approach kind of put you at ease a little bit, knowing that, yes, you're very invested in, in e-commerce, but you're also, you know, very invested in yourselves and, and just kind of having made yourselves a lot smarter over the last, you know, however long you've been running your store. I think it's what, 18 months or 24 months? Yeah, or so. about that now. About that, yeah. Yeah, yeah definitely. Self-education is, is key to us because we're really realizing that um, with self-education, it just it just compounds over time, right? And with experiences, even with bad experiences, as as we've learned the most from, I think, our failures, right? Yeah. So every time we fail at something or something goes wrong, there's always a lesson to be, to be learned from that. So we always look for those lessons and we can see how we can uh, improve and adapt for the next time if, if we fail at something, so... We're just, we're just going to continue to push on and uh, see where it goes. But yeah, if you keep learning and keep developing yourself as, as the asset, then I feel like there's no real, real yeah. reason. And it's, it's a, a, a fun term to use because the way we look at it is, I don't know, we, we were big into video games growing up, like I'm sure we mentioned on the podcast last time. But to us, it, it feels like, you know, every time you consume some piece of knowledge or listen to a book or read a book or, you know, whatever it is, read a blog post, you're, you're just adding to those attributes like you do in video games to create that character and we want to max that character out eventually right the odds are we're probably never going to meet or uh, reach max attribution because we're constantly learning the space is always evolving there's new technologies coming out but we want to be on the forefront of all that right so approaching it in a sense like that has been a lot easier for us because you know, it it's only compounding and we're getting smarter day in and day out. And if Corey and Rodney from right now could go back a year and a half and tell Corey and Rodney of all the potential mistakes we're going to make along the way, like it would be invaluable to us. We There's, mm-hmm. there's no doubt about it. So we want to just continue on so that we can look back each year, each week or each day and say, wow, those guys didn't really know a whole lot. Yeah. <laughs> you know, comparison. So in comparison. <laughs> so it's cool to to always kind of just compare yourself to your uh, your past self because you see how far you've actually come and it really gives you the confidence to to continue on even though we're dealing with a situation like this right now. now I know you guys and and everyone we're talking to um, you're using this as a time to to optimize things, you know, and and things that maybe weren't totally nailed down before or, or things that you wanted to optimize but just hadn't gotten around to because there were there were too many orders or, or you know too many sales coming in these things are a lot less sexy you know fewer uh ka-ching sound effects yeah. involved with yeah. these but uh but what uh what are you doing now that that's not going to be moving the needle uh you know today but but that you think is going to be you know foundational and and big for you guys down the road Mm-hmm. Yeah. So, so to start, we completely redesigned our whole website, um, like from just the ground from up. scratch. Yeah. So, 
it, it looks it looks completely different and it's it's a league above of what it was and just going through every every little system that we've created like email marketing email automations going through every every little email automation and recreating yeah. that and restructuring it so it's uh, in the best way to convert and to be on brand and to match what our customers are wanting to see yeah. going through our instagram and cleaning out posts that we weren't too happy with in terms of their engagement or performance, uh, swapping those out with new types of posts, setting up other channels or getting more involved on other channels like Facebook, uh, Twitter, Pinterest, whatever it may be, you know, revamping affiliate marketing and, and contacting influencers, um, setting up new, I guess, product funnels that we want to test out, email correspondence with anyone that we may have missed or customer support that we've been I guess, lagging on for a little bit of time. Uh, we, we did a whole day where we dedicated just to that. I guess we're, we're also trying to think of our plans to get into potential like retail or wholesale accounts in the future. So trying to structure out a system for, for getting inbound leads for that potentially. We have a, a whiteboard where we break it down into four quadrants and we do next three days, next two weeks, next three months and six months plus or, or long term. And Within each of those, we come up with a, a list of everything we want to accomplish, and then we kind of cycle them down the the funnel to the next three days quadrant. So, yeah, it, we've cleared that board probably the two or three times in the last <laughs> month and a half now. Yeah, we've been getting a lot of stuff done. So, yeah, yeah. It's, it's kind of cool. It's like it's like building a race car. You're not ready to race yet, but the car is that much better for when you are ready to race. Mm -hmm. So we're, uh, we're, we're optimistic. All right. One more, one more question for you guys, then I'll, then I'll let you go. And if, I want to hit, hit on something that you brought up before we started recording. And that's, that's that on the surface of things, this might look like an absolutely disastrous time to, to start an e-commerce store or to, to get into, you know, to, to launch your own business or, or to start something new. And I, I think, you know, I think there's a lot of, a lot of bullet points. You, you know, you can make an argument that this is really a genuinely bad time to do that, but, but you were saying that's not the mindset that, that you wanted, you know, people to take away. That's not how you guys are thinking about it. So talk us through why this isn't a bad time to, to get started and, and what anybody who's recently started or who's thinking about getting started, what should they, you know, keep in mind or remember if they, if they get discouraged by the tumultuous situation that we're in? Mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, as bad as a, of a situation as it is, um, unfortunately, it's reality and it's something that you have to approach as this this is happening regardless. So it's how you want to proceed that's going to dictate your future, right? So look at it like this. Say, say you want to start drop shipping or everything goes back to normal in like a month or two months or whatever. It's an arbitrary time frame. But if, if you start training and start building yourself as the asset now, you can develop your skills to the point where you have a month's worth of skills built up or you have a month's worth of work built up. So when you are ready to go or two months, so when you are ready to go and launch uh, your website or your, your business, you're, you're that much more, prepared. first of all, prepared, your, your knowledge, I guess, basin is built up and um, you're, you're that much more ready to go when, when the time comes. So we, we did a live stream yesterday in our Ecom Explorers uh, Facebook group with Emma. Mm -hmm. And, you know, the, the point was brought up that a lot of people kind of see it in one of two ways where you could spend this, let's say, next month watching Netflix and rewatching Game of Thrones every day or whatever it is, or you could take that time and invest it into yourself, right? And like Rodney said, you're, you're going to have to do this work at some point or another. It's going to be a grind. So why not take advantage of the free time now versus when you are up and running and dealing with all these other fires in your store, right? Because for the last year and a half, that's what we had to do. And, and it's it's burnt us out multiple times because trying to operate and put out all these fires and, and scale up and deal with customer support, you can only do so much. You only have so many hours in a day. And then trying to get self-education in on top of that is very, very difficult. But right now, you know, having an ample amount of time on your hands is we're eating that up. Like it's, yeah. we, although we're, I guess, slow in terms of advertising, we've never been busier because we know that what we put in time and what we put in for work right now is going to pay dividends in the next few months or next year. All right, Rodney, Corey, thanks so much for hopping on. And, and again, they, they, they mentioned it, but check out the, uh, the Facebook group, Ecom Explorers. There's lots of, lots of good conversations going on over there. A lot of knowledge that they're sharing over at Ecom Explorers. Head over there when you're done with this. But uh, in the meantime, guys, thanks so much for hopping on. Yeah, awesome. thank you so thanks much, David. David. We'll talk to you again soon. Yeah, appreciate it. Take care. 
All right, huge, huge thanks again to Rodney and Corey for hopping on. And last but not least, let's check in with our buddy Ryan Carroll, who's in California. We are recording this in in mid-March, and it's just insane to think about how much the topic of coronavirus has evolved since people started hearing about it back in January. And so when did coronavirus get on your radar as something that might be a big, big deal for for your business? Yeah, I mean, I I definitely didn't see the coronavirus being dragged out this far, uh, but it has. And it started really right around Chinese New Year. And so that's when it kind of popped up on my radar. And, and really, it was like, okay, well, this is happening in China. And, you know, this is going to delay shipments out. And nobody really knew what was going on or how long it would take. But I mean, right around the end of January is when this this really popped up and, and started affecting, you know, e-commerce businesses who at least source products from China, that is. Yeah, the, the timing with the, the Chinese New Year is interesting. So the official New Year this year was on January 25th. And there, there are always a few days, you know, right before Chinese mm-hmm. New Year and right after where, you know, it's still part of the celebration. And so businesses, you know, who source products from China, they would expect that, you know, okay, if, if the New Year's on the 25th, then, then maybe starting on the, the 23rd or so, and then stretching, you know, at least a week, things are going to be kind of shut down. And this is something that we always talk about inside the Overlo app, and it's on our blog. And, you know, we kind of give people a heads up that, hey, you know, Chinese New Year's on this day, this is what to expect. There's going to be a break, people travel, and, you know, et cetera, et cetera. This year, though, you know, like you said, the, the coronavirus, it really picked up during that week. And then, and then the official break, which causes these you know, these delays every year, it was just extended. And so, you know, they, they said it would go into February and then they said it would go to February 10th. And, you know, in lots of places, yeah. things are just now, uh, you know, starting to reopen in the second half of March. So, you know, a couple of things on this new year topic, what, what was your plan, you know, heading into the new year, thinking that, that this would be kind of a, a standard Chinese new year. You've been drop shipping for, for years. You kind of know how this works. What was, what was the plan, um, before things kind of, you know, got off the rails? Yeah, so usually during Chinese New Year, I'm not even pushing ads, really. I'm actually kind of getting creatives ready and just almost rebooting everything. So when they are back, ready to ship out, we can just pretty much launch all of our ads and get everything going again. It's funny because at that time, I had just kind of set up a bunch of new uh, like Google campaigns, and I was really excited about them. And we did a little bit of testing, and they started uh, bringing us some sales. And so I was like, I had high hopes for this, right? And then as soon as, uh, you know, the coronavirus broke out and then it ended up shutting down all of the suppliers, like shipments to the U.S. And so at that point, I was like, all right, like this is going to get really interesting um, because I had turned my ads actually back on after Chinese New Year, mm. right? Um, so we started getting orders. And I didn't think that the coronavirus would be dragged out pretty much all through February, but it was. And so I turned off my ads again because we, you know, obviously weren't shipping anything out. We had to refund customers and, um, you know, just send out emails about everything like that. Pretty much the standard on, you know, how to handle an actual online business if you're not shipping anything out. Yeah. So what did the, the damage control look like? Cause I mean, I, I can imagine that, you know, like you said, if you re-fired up ads and, you know, and you're even like maybe investing more in, in new ad channels, um, this is the last thing you want to have happen. So like, what did that look like when the, the orders were coming in, but the products weren't going out? Yeah. I mean, luckily it wasn't anything big. Like we turned, we shut it down pretty quick. So there wasn't really too much damage. I think it was more just the scarcity in myself was the real damage where it was like, okay, like we got this ready to go. It's just, when's it going to go? You know what I mean? I hate mm-hmm. waiting around and not doing anything. Or- and so did, did you just revert back to, to Chinese New Year mode and just kind of kept things paused then? Yeah, exactly. Uh, I went into rebuilding two other stores. So right now, like I have three stores in my portfolio, if you will, of you know e-commerce businesses I'm running and managing. So I would just literally worked on all of those and kind of sat around and waited for everything. You mentioned suppliers and people who who drop ship and who source products on on your level often cultivate relationships with these suppliers. So after you do a certain volume, you know, you have some credibility, you kind of have a rapport um, and, you know, and you can approach suppliers and say, hey, like it's me, I'm the one bringing you all these sales, you know, yep. so, so th- there's kind of this relationship that develops. What were you hearing from the suppliers that you know, that you had opened up this communication with, what were they telling you, you know, during this period? Well, they, they really didn't even know too much either, to be honest. It was, 
that's why it was kind of scary because at first it was just like, oh, we should be reopening within a week, like after Chinese New Year. Um, Mm -hmm. so I was like, okay, that's not too bad. Like, that's why we'll start running ads again and we'll start getting them fulfilled, you know, right after Chinese new year happened. And then at that point they kept pushing it back and pushing it back. So really the communication was weird because I think that most suppliers, to be honest, were not really too much in the know either. Like they just mm-hmm. knew there was a coronavirus. They weren't allowed to ship out. Now, so what, I mean, one of the, the creative things that you did, you know, during this, this crazy, you know, second half of January and, and then into February is, is you relied on, on suppliers that were shipping out of the U.S. And so, you know, there are settings inside of Oberlo and there are, there are settings on, on AliExpress where you can filter out, you know, certain products and certain variants that ship not just from China, which is kind of like the, you know, the standard source of, of a lot of these products, but also from, you know, a handful of Western countries uh, in Europe and also the, the U.S. What did, what did that switch where you started, you know, uh, sourcing U.S.-based products, what did that do for the, for the business? So actually right when, uh, uh, you know, the coronavirus happened and, and it broke out. We had an actual Chinese supplier. However, the shipping time was pretty quick, but it, they were shipping from China. And so at that point, that's kind of when I realized like we need another alternative. And, you know, that's when inside AliExpress, I would suggest most people start doing this is finding, you know, suppliers who actually have United States warehouses and can ship from the U.S. If you're actually, you know, your main demographic is inside the United States. They also do have like Europe and Australia and stuff like that. But the cool thing about shipping from the United States is it's USPS. So it's about four to seven business days. And that's kind of just like game changer because right away, it's just going to be so much quicker. You're not going to have refunds and everything like that. So regardless of the coronavirus or not, I would suggest most people, you know, start looking for, you know, those suppliers who have United States as shipping. And then, you know, it might be like two or three extra dollars for your product, but I can tell you for a fact that that will be so much better for your business just to have those shipping times. I highly recommend spending an extra two or three dollars per shipment to to get it out of the US. You know, not all products you can find, but there's a majority of products. If you just are on AliExpress and you toggle that little ships from uh, United States, you'll find, you'll definitely find some. We got that ships from thing inside of Oberlo too, just for the record. So you can, you, you can use the AliExpress yeah, one. But... Exactly. I didn't even realize that. I'm always looking at AliExpress, but that's, that's good to know. <laughs> it's all good. We'll let, we'll let you slide on that one. Yeah. If, if, so if, if things kind of return to normal or normal-ish in China, like maybe, I don't know, maybe it'll be months and months and months before it really gets back to, you know, 2019 levels of, of normalcy. But if, if things kind of, you know, get back to the way they were in China, but then deteriorate elsewhere, like so, you know, we were talking about these, these shipping options out of Europe and, and, and North America and Australia. It looks like those could become the the dicey ones. Is, is this something that's on your radar? Because it seems like we could be heading toward like a pretty unprecedented situation in, in North America and, and, you know, things are already very dicey over here in Europe. What will that do to your calculus when it comes to, to where to get these products from? Is, is there some bizarre universe where, where China becomes the, the safer bet than the North America? Yeah, I mean, to be honest, I haven't even thought of that on my radar and I'm glad that you put it on my radar now. <laughs> so, but I mean, if that were to happen, yeah, I mean, I would just go back to shipping out of China. I just couldn't see it happening, like, especially with like Amazon shipping orders out and everything like that. I mean, for them to shut down all of like the US shipping, I mean, it could happen. Who knows? There's always ways. And I mean, you just have to find it. I mean, something you could potentially do uh, with products is obviously bulk order them and try to get them to a warehouse, you know, in the US, wherever you're at, that can ship them out. If you were really committed and I mean, you could even ship it to your house, you know what I mean? And ship out orders yourself. I've done that when I first started in in e-commerce, you know, however, if that ever came to a phase where you were needing to bulk order products, obviously drop shipping is beneficial because you can test everything and you don't have to actually buy the product until it's actually sold. So we're entering this kind of weird, well, it seems weird to me, this weird period now where, yeah. you know, things are getting canceled, schools are getting shut down, you know, people are, are discouraged from going out to eat. And, and it's just kind of a bizarre moment right now. And, and I'm curious if how this, you know, general atmosphere um, that we're seeing, how this affects, you know, your approach to to marketing and just kind of the way that you're, you know, viewing these different stores. Cause like you said earlier, you know, you, you had one store that was rock solid already heading into, mm-hmm. you know, Chinese new year. And now you're kind of in the process of launching two new ones, but it's a weird time to be launching stores, I would imagine. So what's, what is this kind of the, you know, vibe in the air right now? What does that do to how you're, you know, viewing the, the, the marketing and the, and the, 
you know, the product testing and all that stuff. Yeah, it's really interesting right now. I've, I can definitely feel it in the air. And I'm sure you guys listening and you, David, can feel it as well. It's, it seems very scarce on my end. Like everyone's, you know, buying out all the grocery stores. And it's very interesting during a time like this because I like to look at how people react, right? And how, like the buying behavior of people as well. Because I don't think in a time like this, people are necessarily going to buy things they don't necessarily need, right? A lot of people are spending their extra money on buying extra food and toilet paper and, and those kind of essentials right now as we're kind of in this weird, scarce time. So you think the kind of old MO of you know pushing impulse buy products that, that are like, they, they look cool in a Facebook ad, they are like utterly non-essential, but, but nonetheless kind of like fun. I'm thinking of like an inflatable flamingo sort of thing. Like, <laughs> like, like that's not, that's not the thing to be, to be spending ad money on right now. You know, I don't want to say no, cause who knows, you know, people, people might like inflatable flamingos. Um, all I'm saying for, is from a, from a mass perspective, if you look at kind of where most of the money's going now, most people's extra dollars are going to buy more food. Um, and like I mentioned, more toilet paper and everything like that, that kind of people are buying on. So I, I wouldn't say that you shouldn't test products like that. I'm just looking at where kind of where the money's going right now. And I just don't see it going more towards things that are kind of fun and people might want to use. I think people are going to start buying things that they actually really need in their household. Cool, Ryan, we can leave it there. Uh, thanks so much for hopping on. We really appreciate you, you know, breaking down what, what you've seen from your end and uh, we'll, we'll catch up with you down the road. Of course, I appreciate it, David. We'll talk. All right, that'll do it for this episode. Again, uh, kind of a weird one, but we're glad you joined us. We've got more content about what coronavirus means uh, for you and for, for your e-commerce store and your e-commerce future over at the Overlo blog, the Overlo YouTube channel as well. Is, uh, is knocking out some videos about how to navigate this weird period that we're in. There are ways uh, to get better while we wait this out, and we're going to be there uh, to help you do both of those. As always, feel free to shoot us a note at podcast at and we will talk to you soon.